This is the patch and release video for version 3.3 of Poyomi Tune Shader. It is available right now to all $5 plus patrons, so if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description. And for everyone else, it'll be available for free in two weeks. There was a lot of behind the scenes work this week again, so there's going to be noticeable changes, but maybe not settings for them. So you're going to see stuff like the lighting color is much more correct now in a lot of situations. There were situations where there was weird lighting mixing that didn't really make sense. So your shadow colors and the light colors on either side of your model are going to be a lot more accurate to uh, the world and shaders like standard which get light far more accurately than your average tune shader. So we should be much better on that. Um, so we fixed lighting colors. I changed how AO or ambient occlusion is calculated, but it's still applied the same way and you most likely won't notice a difference. I moved a lot of the commonly used stuff in the shader to a single file where it can all be calculated once and only once and then reused. So we should get some solid performance increases overall. There's also in the shader, let me just make a object. Oops. Slimeans, just throw some random thing down. So, in the shader, there are now settings for enabling each option individually. So, you'll see enable metallics or enable matcap. All of these things enable and disable each thing. So when you get version 3.3, a lot of your stuff may seem like it's not working. So maybe you have a mission normally and it's not on now. All you have to do is go into your mission settings and just turn it on. And one thing I've noticed a lot of people don't know is that you can actually just select like multiple shaders at once and change all of their settings at the same time. Uh, I found a lot of people do things one at a time and they don't realize you can actually multi-select. So. Just a heads up, you can do that. Lighting is the only thing that will be enabled by default, but you can optionally turn it off now. So a lot of people just want to be entirely unlit. And now you can. You can just turn off your lighting and be whatever color you want. So I'll show you what that looks like. So you just have no lighting. You'll be full bright in every single world. And if that's what you want, go for it. It's not what I would go for, but teach their own. One of the big new features this week is the introduction of Anisotropic Specular. I don't expect anyone to know what that is, but it's under the Specular settings. And you can see Anisotropic right here. This is one of those settings that it's going to be kind of complicated to use, but for the people who know how to use it, it's going to be really nice. So we it's not fully implemented yet in the sense that like it doesn't do everything that I would like it to do. Down the line eventually I would like it to work for like anime style hair stuff like that. So you can actually see what this looks like right here. Um, so Anisotropic Specular uses the tangent space which is pretty much like normals shoot away from an object and tangent kind of shows the direction of the surface. So if, for example, a normal was just pointed straight up from the surface here, a tangent would be pointing in this direction. And it would go down the surface. And it's controlled by your UV map. So to get a perfect circle like this, your UV map would actually have to organize all of the vertices to go, or not all the vertices, all of the like triangles to be straight down. So you would want, uh, let me just open Photoshop and show you what I mean. So for something like this, this would be perfect. The top is here, the bottom is here. You would have perfect tangent mapping, but, and the skirt would work up here as well. But if you had something like this that was sideways, now all of your tangents are going to be sideways and you're going to have issues with anisotropic reflections being instead of looking like this they're going to look like this and obviously if that's on your head that's not going to look right 
So a lot of this really does come down to having properly set up models, which I know most people do not. And there's ways around that, and I'll show you them soon. But know that there are limitations to the system right now, and it's not where it's going to be in the future. So it will come. <laughs> So what one thing you can do is switch from tangent space to by tangent. And what that does is if normals are up and tangents are along the surface, by tangents are perpendicular to both of those. So if you have, say, a triangle like, or actually I can just show you with the move tool. So if, say this green one was the normal and the red one was the tangent, the by tangent would be the blue one. So Basically, it's just 90 degrees from the other ones. So tangent will be this way horizontally and bitangent will be vertical. And again, that is based on the rotation of your model. So anisotropic specular actually has two speculars at once. The first one is just controlled by the smoothness slider, smooth, <laughs> smoothness slider up here and the alpha of that is controlled right here or by the color of the specular tint. So you could have one that's really sharp like this if you wanted to have like that nice anime hair highlight, but hair also has a secondary highlight that's softer around this hard highlight. So you could actually go down here and set up a secondary specular that's soft. Uh, let's just change this texture to something easier to see. So yeah, something like that's fine. So you can see you have the main highlight and then you have a secondary one that's softer. And that's pretty close to how real hair works. You can adjust the alpha of either one. And the fall off. And that's basically anisotropic. One thing that you can also do for more complex materials is create a directional map. And that's actually going to, instead of using the tangent or bitangent up here, you're actually going to use the directions from that map. So I can show you an example that I include with the shader under the Poyomi Tune Shader folder, examples, anisotropic specular. So I'll throw that in the scene. And you can see that it's actually just using this. So this is up, this is right, this is down. It's like a normal map, but it's for the surface of your object. And you can see that that actually causes these waves to happen. Or not waves, but there's lines of light. And that is because I have put the anisotropic directional map down here. And if you disable that, you will just get those solid lines again. But when it's enabled, you get this pretty gleam on this vinyl disc. And it looks good. So this is just using a directional map and a specular map. The specular map looks like this. So all of these darker spots are going to be less reflective. And that's how you kind of get this these lines in the surface. And it's also metallic and those the normal map for it also affects the lighting. So it's pretty hard to see this normal map, but it is there. And that'll affect the lighting on all of these little lines as well, making it look more realistic. And you can use that for a ton of stuff like carbon fiber or even silk. That silk has um, really thin lines that would cause reflections like this to occur. And I guess I can explain the basics of an anisotropic reflection. So what's happening is basically you have a surface that has lots of bumps. I'll make this smaller actually. So you have a surface that has lots of bumps like this, and then you're gonna have a light source and your eye is over here, say, looking and the light's gonna hit these bumps and because they're smooth curves like this or somewhat smooth they're gonna all kinda just it's, no matter how the light hits it there's gonna be a spot where it's going to bounce directly into your eye 
and that means that the reflection on the surface, rather than just being a circle like normal specular, it's actually going to make a line down the surface. And you can see this if you in lots of stuff, like if you go to the shore of a beach on sun, during the sunset, you're going to see that line from the sun all the way to the shore because it's hitting all of the waves individually and bouncing that light right into your eye. So I think that's enough explaining for that, but that's how that works. Another thing that I got a lot of requests for was glow-in-the-dark emission. People wanted to be emissive in only the dark oops, and not really in the day or in vice versa. They wanted to be somewhat emissive in the dark but super emissive during the day so it was more obvious. So I'm just going to reset this material and show you what that looks like. Make it darker so it's easier to see emissions. So I'll enable emissions. We're just going to throw a random mask on here. Go with stars like normal. <laughs> and then just show them. So that's what your emission would look like normally. Uh, let's throw some post processing in here so we get, get stuff looking pretty. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this is what your emission would look like normally. And a lot of people don't want it to shine like that during the day, so they want it to only show up in the dark. And I have allowed you to do this right here. So go to the glow-in-the-dark emission, and then enable glow-in-the-dark emission. And you won't see anything in a perfectly bright scene, but you'll see as we turn down the lighting, the emission should start to show up. So as the scene gets darker, the emission shows up more and more. And that's actually controlled. Here, let me turn off the skybox lighting so it's more obvious. Set the color to just black. So as the lighting turns down, you'll actually see the stars start to shine more and more brightly. And there's two settings for this. You can either have the the entire thing based on the world lighting, so the average lighting of the world around you, or you can have it based on the lighting of the, your mesh itself, which means that things in shadow will glow, but things in light will not. And as the lighting changes, the entire thing will become emissive. So we can just grab that directional light and lower that down again. You'll see the emission start to pop up on the other side. So if you want stuff like lights that only appear in shadow, that is possible now. <laughs> or even a map, you could have it in a map where as the lighting changes, lights in the map will turn on. There's a lot of cool things you can do with this, and I look forward to seeing what you do. So for the settings, there is a min and max emission multiplier that basically controls how the or when stuff is applied so at min lighting settings so zero in this case your emission will be multiplied by min emission multiplier which is one and at max lighting you're going it's going to be or at max lighting which is one brightness your emission multiplier is going to be multiplied by zero so meaning at max lighting you're going to have zero emission and at min lighting you're going to have full emission and you can invert this so I can say I want at min lighting, I want my emission to be zero and at max lighting, I want it to be one. So now you only glow in the sun and maybe that's what you're going for. And you can adjust all these. So I could set min lighting to like 0.5 and then now it will glow full bright at 0.5 and below. And you can see that here. And when I turn down the lighting, it reaches that max lighting setting around 0.5 and then doesn't really get any brighter. I added another setting to the miscellaneous settings called Z bias or Z bias. And what this does is if you have say two objects like this, 
and let me just throw a different material on one of these. So if you have two objects like this and they're kind of like, you get some of this like Z fighting and you want to get rid of that, you can actually go into, let me make sure this is actually the right material. Naomi tune defaults cut out. So you're gonna have like Z fighting and all a bunch of gross stuff you don't really want. To fix this, you can go into miscellaneous Z bias and offset your Z bias so that it actually appears slightly in front of that object or behind it. So if you lower this a little and you have really tightly squeezed objects or objects that are really close together, you can adjust that Z bias and they will no longer collide like that. And that's that. So I'm just going to delete that. Again, you can see all of the patch changes on the Trello. I'll leave a link in the description for that. But for 3.3, for example, we have all of this stuff, 3.2, this. And you can actually, if you sign up for Trello, or log in, you can vote on any of the upcoming stuff. So we have Patreon shaders and feature requests here. So if you want to have a hand in what happens next or you want to vote on what happens next, this is the place to do it. And the last thing this patch is debug information. So I put in a debug thing for people who are having problems with their models and just to help me develop stuff. So if you enable debug, you then have options down here for what you want to show. So if I want to show the vertex normals of this mesh, for example, I can do that. And if I want to see the pixel normals, which are going to look the same in this case, but if I throw on a normal map, that is not a normal. If I throw on a normal map, you can now see them. So the vertex normals are the normals of your mesh. And the pixel normals are the normals of the normal map and your mesh combined. And the lighting data, or I guess I can show it. There's tangents and binormals, which are bitangents. And lighting data, you can see shadows via attenuation. You can see the direct lighting color. You can see the indirect lighting color. You can see the final lighting ramp. Let me just remove this normal map so it's more sense or makes more sense. You can see final lighting, you can see the ramped lighting. So the ramped lighting is just based on your ramp. If I change this ramp, you'll see different ramped lighting. <laughs> and then the final lighting is just that ramp being applied. And specular data, because I was working on that, you can look at only the specular stuff. We don't actually have any enabled right now, but the debug menu will expand as I work on stuff and hopefully it's helpful to people who just want to maybe see what the lighting is like in their world. They can throw my shader in there and view the direct and indirect lighting. And I think that covers everything this week. Sorry if this was a longer video, but there was stuff to explain. Uh, so again, this is available right now to $5 plus patrons. There's a link in the description for that. If you're interested in this or anything else I do, there is a link to the Discord for people who want to check that out or just need help in general. Feel free to join. Thanks for watching.